very blessed day, everyone. Greetings to you again in the name of the Father, the Creator, Most High, Allah, Yah, Yod He Va O He, Elohim, God in our modern day name, and in the name of the Son, the Lord Thoth Melchizedek Lehova. This is Neophyte DAG bringing you another message on this series. Thou art rich, you are rich, O house of Israel. And in this message, we're going to talk about Israel, the black people, people of color with the count at the bank of heaven on earth. Well, before I jump into this message, I'm going to give you a backstory on this message. I had finished what I thought was all the riches of the people of the house of Israel, and I was going to move on to the bank president of the bank of heaven, which is on earth. And a voice said to me, you know, you're joking with this people, information that you have to give to them. You're really joking with the people. And I said, well, I'm going to go on to the bank of the president anyway. I'm going to ignore that voice. So the voice spoke to me in Jamaican because it know when it speaks to me in Jamaican, I better listen. And it said, yo, my youth, you ramp with the people them things. Tell them about them riches and stop ramping. You joke around. Sort out the people them things. So I'm here now to sort you out and give you the fullness of it, of what your riches are and what they're going to be. So let's jump into this message. Thou art, you have the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the experience, the observation, and now you have the Holy Ghost again working with you, letting you have full access to the Akashic Record. So no one can pull any strings on you, no one can run any circle around you, and certainly the fallen angels and their disciples Lucifer and his disciples and the Gentiles whom they have put in control have no more power over you, O Israel. It's now your time where the art of the covenant now is being put back in place, where it's your time to rule again. Going back to the 10-year mistake, because I always have to send to your back to 2022, which is actually 2012. So I have to let you know over and over again, someone changed their calendar by 10 years. So 2012, which is now 2022, are one of the same. When it comes to the 2012, which is the 2022 phenomenon where there's going to be a paradigm shift from darkness to light. That's what it's all about. There's a shift. Those who are ruling in darkness, they're going to the back seat now. Actually, they're going to vanish. And those who want to rule in light, it's now their time. And that kicks off in 2022, which is actually 2012. So now is the time. The year is 2022 when I'm delivering this message. Now is the time for that paradigm shift to kick into high gear. This is where we get to who are the people that are going to be on the spiritual side ruling in this time of light. When the paradigm shift is kicking into high gear, these people, their blessings, their manna is also going to kick into high gear. So who are the people to collect their manna, their riches, their blessings, from the bank of heaven. Who are these people who have accounts with riches already loaded up in it by their father who's up in heaven and they're now to collect those riches. Who are those people? That's what we're going to focus on. Let's start with the biblical people and then we're going to jump into the actual people. The biblical people are the righteous seed. Those are the holy prophets who have been spreading the word these days and days before that the Lord is coming back and he's going to set everything right. That's the righteous seed. They're called the elects. 
The other people, those who listened to the prophets, the prophets of old and the prophets now in 2022 that have been spreading the word, the people who have listened to them have made themselves ready. Those are the righteous seeds. Those who believe that the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah, and the Most High is coming back to redeem them. Those are the righteous seeds. Those who have looked forward to be forgiven of their sins and want to move into a righteous path and have moved in a righteous path. Those are the righteous seeds. Those who have kept the commandment of love, the commandment of the five divine law, which is the cross philosophy, and the seven thought principle, we call it the hermetic principles, and obey the two statutes, no idol worshiping, no graven image, and obey and honor the Sabbath. Those are the righteous seeds. The little children up to seven years old, those are the righteous seed. But I just put out a message to accept the little children that are being born now as part of the pandemic plague, the black eyed kids. I'm not sure if they are the righteous seeds, so I can't speak on their behalf in this message. These are the proof within the Bible that gives you the righteous seed. I won't go over them. I've covered them in the previous message to this one, Thou Art Rich. Go back to that, and it will give you a complete understanding of they or the righteous seeds, how it's written in the book. This is also in the book telling you who will be resurrected because the righteous seed, the ones who I just pointed out, they will be resurrected when the first gathering occur. And they'll be taken to a place of safety until the destruction is done. They are the righteous seed as well. They have eternal life and they're raised up to dwell with the Most High in the next millennium, the next 1,000 years. They are the righteous seed. These are the righteous seed as well, which we're going to cover in physical form. The people of the book, the people of the covenant that were afflicted in Genesis 15 verse 13, and they were afflicted by those who are talked about in Matthew 24 verse 28. The eagles, that's the Caucasian Americans, the Gentiles in the Bible as they're described, and we call them in our modern day term, the white people, but don't be harsh on them. They were only being directed by Lucifer and his fallen angels. So you have to put the focus on where it should be placed, not on the Gentiles. They're gonna be among us, the one who cleave onto us now, who are moving into our power to rule this nation in peace, to rule the planet in peace the Gentile will be numbered among us. Let's not cast a blame there. Let's cast a blame where it should be blamed. The Luciferic forces that have been plaguing our planet with hate, war, destruction, suffering, starvation, and it's only being done by a few they call themselves the elite. I'll get to them in another message. All bad deeds don't go unpunished. There's such a thing as karma. Won't spend any time on them. In this message, we're going to spend time on those who were afflicted by the deceptive rulership of Lucifer, the seat of Satan, which is now in America. So who are really the people that are to collect what's deposited in their accounts by their father in the bank of heaven? Who are they? First, we go back to Revelation 2 verse 9. Thou art rich, O children of Adam. Thou art rich. And we have treasures up in heaven waiting for you. It's unseen right now. It's hidden right now, but it will soon be seen and it will be soon unhidden. 
Thou art rich, O Adamic race. You're going to bring peace to this planet. Let's jump into Adam. We go to a book, Adam and the Pre-Adamites by Dr. Doriel. Tells us, Adam, even though we believe he's the father of everybody, no, he's not. He was not the father of the entire race, but the father of one distinct group of people with certain racial characteristics. Adam was the father of what we call the Semitic people. We'll stick a pin there because we'll get to Semitic real soon. Let's jump to the bottom of this. Adam was a generic term which meant not one man, but a race of men which were reddish in complexion. And many of the modern brown races came from Adam. They derived from Adam, the red race, which were Semitic people. We jump to the right-hand side, Adam, to be red in the reference to his ruddy complexion. He has a red complexion. I gave you the meaning of ruddy as well. Red of color, of a bright yellow color. Ruddy, red complexion. Who came from the red complexion? The brown race. So Adam is not the progenitor of all men. He's the progenitor, the originator of the red race, which is now the brown race. So if Adam is a color, what is Eve? Eve is the progenitor of the Caucasian race. I won't get into that today, but stick a pin. If Adam is a color, Eve must be a color as well. We'll move on. Ruddy in the Bible. All over the Bible is ruddy, but no one told us what it meant. Adam is ruddy. All his descendants are ruddy, and they became the brown race, which is still ruddy. Songs of Solomon tells you, beloved is white and ruddy. That's A, hijack. I'll explain that to you in a minute. Solomon, Ruddy. Samuel, talking about Ruddy. Lamentations, Ruddy, all over the Bible. The word Ruddy is there. Adam, again, is Ruddy. So I gave you examples of Ruddy in case you're wondering what a Ruddy person looks like. Ruddy red, Ruddy yellow. That's Ruddy. These are people who are synonymous with the term ruddy in the Bible, the term ruddy for Adam. Dark skin, melanated people in our modern day term, we call them black people. Ruddy, the original root race of Adam, the people of spiritual nature that is referred to in Genesis 1 verse 27. He created you in his image. Genesis 2, he created you from the dust, made you ruddy. So you have the two in one, the spirit and the ruddiness. O oh, house of Israel, O oh, house of Lewis, thou art rich. Let's get to Solomon, because they said Solomon was white and ruddy. Nonsense. That's the hijack. Let's talk about Solomon talking about himself. Song of Solomon 1, verse 5 and verse 6. I am black. Say it loud again and say it and be proud. I am black. But I am nice to look at in appearance, pleasing in appearance. Solomon is saying, I'm pretty, baby. I'm black and I'm pretty. I am black. And to make sure that he makes sure, to make sure that you know that he's black, he repeats it again. Song of Solomon 1 verse 6, I am black. Once more again, say it loud and proud, I am black. Solomon describing himself. Who, what race of people have foot that looks like burnt brass? I won't go into that just yet. Just to give you a flavor. Black and you're proud. I am black, 
but I'm pleasing to look at, I am pretty. Songs of Solomon 1, verse 5 and 6. Let's go into the books. Receipts on top of receipts today. Let's jump into the book, slavery, as it relates to Negro and the African race. Examine in light of the circumstances of the Holy Scripture and history to go with it. It's by Priest Josiah, page 39 of that book. And the earth has it also been divided by the Most High, the Divine Hand, and suited for the persons and the people that's the characteristics associated with them. you given parts of the world that suits you. To the white race, the descendants of Japheth, the northern region, the cold region, the Caucasians, the white race, they're more acclimated to colder temperatures, so the most I gave them the colder region. To Shem, the descendants of the red race, O house of Israel, the copper color people, O house of Israel, the house of Lewis, the middle region of the earth, the temperate region, meaning it has two temperatures. It has all four seasons. It is located north of the equator. And before you reach the northern part of the cold region, just to give you a visual idea as to where you're located, where you were given as your land. And to Ham, the Hamites were given the burning earth, which is south of the equator where it's hot. Moving on, an abridged history of Africa and her people by Ruthie Johnson, R.N., page 73 of her book, Japheth, the White One. And from him descended the Caucasians. Shem, the Copper Color One, O House of Lewis, the progenitor of the Hebrew Israelites, and the copper color races, O house of Lewis, O house of Israel. And Hamite, from him, descended the more dark complexion races, the darker types. That's what's being kept from you, to know who is who. Don't stop there. We're going to go into Judah, the Jews, which are part one tribe of the house of Lewis, the house of Israel. We go to a book, Messiah Agadath. That's the Messiah who's coming real soon, who shall be revealed by Dr. Doriel. In that book, the Jewish people were told there are 12 tribes of Israel. And many do not know that Israel means all mankind. That's why I'm telling you the Gentiles and everyone else will be numbered among Israel. But the dark-skinned people are the ones who will be leading the charge in bringing back Israel, bringing back peace to this planet. So Israel doesn't only mean the tribe of Judah, which is the Jew race of people. Judah consists of only one tribe of people. The Jew people are dark-skinned, dark hair, dark-eyed people. They are of the brown race. Where did we see the brown race? Where did we see the brown race? Here, Adam. The brown race is from Adam. Oh, house of Adam. House of Shem, House of Lewis, House of Israel, dark skin, melanated, copper color people. Thou art rich. Thou art rich. Let's talk about the Jew, the tribe of Judah, and why they're so special. Melchizedek, who is our Lord, Thoth, Lehova, he knew, he discovered that the Jew, tribe of Judah people had unusual memory. 
They had the ability to remember anything imparted to them without changing one word. So he taught them the Kabbalah. All those who are bickering now about the Kabbalah and that it's demonic and that it's witchcraft. Oh, you have to answer to Melchizedek. My Lord told Melchizedek when he returns. You're going to have to give account for that. It's what he taught Judah, the tribe of Judah. And because he taught it to them, they're bringing it back right now. Because Melchizedek taught them the Hebrew alphabet, which came from the Kabbalah. Melchizedek chose the children of Judah because they had unusual memory. So Judah, it's written in your DNA, the Kabbalah, the light code is written in your DNA of the tribe of Judah. It's 186,400. It's not a number of the people. It's the velocity of light, the speed of light is 186,400. That's why Judah, you are the light. 186,400 of the tribe of Judah, you are the light. You have to step up now and take charge in this paradigm shift to lead the house of Israel out of darkness to light. That's why, Judah, you're chosen to be the custodian of the knowledge that needs to be given to the people now during the time of the paradigm shift. From darkness to light, you are the teacher. The Lion of Judah, which is Elijah, is from the tribe of Judah. That's what I'm here to tell you today. That's the message I got for you. Let's read on. The Races of Europe, a Sociological Study by William Z. Ripley. Page 394 of that book. English Jew seems to be of a slighter, lighter than their brethren, the Sephardic Jews, which are peculiarly dark. Peculiar, whenever you see peculiar, that means they're very dark. They're extremely dark. Those who call themselves Jews and they're not, I know the blasphemy of what you've done, but the real Jew, the dark-skinned, melanated people, thou art rich. And let's talk about the Semite, because Adam is a progenitor of the Semitic race. So let's talk about the Semitic people are dark. And the evidence in the sacred books prove this, that they are the original dark type of people. Thus, they are black. Say it loud and proud, I am black. Science have corroborated this. The popular expression that the modern day Jews are brunette. Don't think it's a brunette white person. Brunette, what's the meaning of it? Brown, a woman with a brown or someone with a dark complexion. That's you, oh my Jew, house of Judah. The Jew, the true Jew, thou art rich, thou art the light, 186,400. You are the speed of light. Don't let anyone tell you anything otherwise. The Natural History Man by James Cowles Pritchard, page 132. The Jews of Portugal are very dark. So whoever telling you 
that the Jews are Caucasians, lies, all lies, someone they brought in, Lucifer, the fallen angels, the demons brought in and influenced the Caucasians to take your identity, take your birthright. But our father doesn't sleep. The Lord though doesn't sleep. He knew that there's a time when the people shall know who they are. And the time is now. You shall know who you are. The blackness of the Jews spread throughout the entire world can keep the Jews down, the true Jews, the house of Lewis, the house of Israel, can keep them down. The black man, the black woman, the black children, you can keep them down. Can't, can keep them down. Now is your time. America and Europe, another book by Adam D. Gorowski, page 177 of that book. What is it saying? The number of Jews have the greatest resemblance to the Americans, mulattoes. Who are the mulattoes? The dark-skinned people. Sallow complexion. Sallow means dark skin in shade. Thick lips. Crisp black hair. Those are the Jews. This is what a person who knows what the Jews look like in his country telling others when he came to America and he saw all those black people running around, he said, how many Jews are here? How many? They resemble, the, the Jews in my country resemble the American mulattoes. Dark complexion, thick lips, crisp hair of all the Jewish population scattered over the globe. I am therefore well acquainted with how the Jews look like, well acquainted with their features. On my arrival in America, I took every, every light colored person for a Jew. Oh, house of Judah, O oh, children of Israel, O oh, house of Lewis. Now, now, now I get to Jamaica. Now it's time for Jamaica. It's time to wake up my Jewish brothers and sisters in Jamaica. Jamaica in 1850, written by John Bigelow, who traveled to Jamaica in 1850 and gave a documentation of what he saw in Jamaica. Page 15, page 15. He was in Kingston. Kingston contains about 40,000 inhabitants at that time. Nine-tenths of those inhabitants are people of color. The proportion of Jews of all colors is fearfully great. That's what he's telling you what he saw in Kingston. Fearfully great. There are Jews running all over the place. Where did they go? Did they migrate it off the island? No, they're there right now. My Jamaican brethren and sisters, you are Jews. If you didn't know, I'm here to tell you today. On a Jew. No make nobody fool no. On a Jew, everybody know except uno. You are Jew. The amount of you in Jamaica, Kingston, all over the parishes, all parishes, fearfully great. 
I had never seen a black Jew before. That's what he said. I am frightened. How many black Jews are in Jamaica? I am shocked out of my mind. That's what he's saying. Their Israelite profile. My imagination could not combine the feature of Isaac who made the covenant with Melchizedek, Lehova, Thoth, with their thick lips, saying, can't imagine, the man lost his mind. So much on the day of Jamaica, so much on the Jew day of Jamaica, I'm talking to you now to wake you up to who you are. You are Jews. No make my body fool or not. Fool no time no. You are Jews. They know you didn't know. Now you know. Rise up and take what's coming to you now, the manna from heaven that's coming. Now, with all good things that's been going on, it has to come to an end. So we're going to divvy up the land as it was divvied up in the beginning. Whatever has the beginning has to come back at the end. Book of Jubilees, chapter 8, verse 12. And everything which is of the north of the planet belongs to Japheth. And everything towards the south belongs to Shem. The land that went to Japheth, the Caucasian, and his sons for their inheritance, which they will and should possess for eternity, five great islands and a great land in the north, the cold region. But it is cold where Japheth is, and the land of Ham is hot. I'm reading from verse 30. But the land of Shem is not hot or cold because it's mixed with cold and heat, it's temperate. Goes back to the priest, Josiah, the divine division of the land of the Most High. You get the land that's suitable to your nature. This is the division of the land. This is what it looks like. Don't let anyone fool you. This is what the division of the land was at the beginning, so shall it be at the end. History repeats itself. There's nothing new under the sun. So whoever is in location that they shouldn't be, the Most High and the Lord will adjust it because you were given your location and that's where you shall be and will be for eternity, generations forever. This is the land. Take a good look at it. Now, let's see what happened to those who have violated the boundaries that was not given to them. No bad deed goes without its punishment. It's just that no one told whoever was violating of the punishment that was to come because Lucifer and his disciples and his agents did not want people to know that they were violating the laws of the Most High. So he hid these things, put them to the side. Book of Jubilees, chapter 9, verse 14 and 15 talks about the curse against violating boundaries. And thus the sons of Noah divided for their children before Noah, their father, and he made them swear an oath to curse each other and everyone who desired to seize a portion of the land, which did not, was, and is not given to him. You didn't get the land, so you should not desire that land. Stay in your lane. Stay in what's given to you. And they all said, yes, so be it, so let it be. To them and their sons, 
forever in generations. So it wasn't at that time only. They swore it for you. That's why the children is going to reap the effects and the detriment of the parents. Not because you didn't swear at that time. Oh, I'm, I, you know, I'm absolved from it. I don't have to agree to it. No, 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 no. This is sworn in spiritual truth, so it lasts forever. So you can't weasel your way out of that one. It's here. Forever you swore you were going to uphold. So it was given to you. But at some point in time, one of your ancestors decided to violate it and not tell you that, hey, the agreement's still there. This is what's going to happen until the day of judgment in which the Lord Thoth, Melchizedek, the Hova, will judge them with sword and fire. Sword, war. They'll fight among themselves. Fire, Red Kachina. That's coming to make sure who's on that land is going to have to get up off that land. So whoever violated boundaries, this curse of oath has been placed on you. If you're in a location that is within this map boundaries and you shouldn't be there, this is something that you need to be aware of. Until the day of judgment, you can violate, but when the judgment time comes, which is now, most I and the Lord will judge you for the boundaries that you have violated with war and cosmic fire, Red Kachina. Japheth, Caucasians, Gentiles, the elites, you have been warned, you have been duly notified. Dark-skinned people, Shemites should be in the middle. That's the house of Israel, the house of Lewis. The Shemites, the Adamites, the Semitic people, whatever name you want to call them, and they are to be governed over and served by Judah. So your riches in the bank of heaven, in earth, on earth, earth is America, earth also means the entire planet. So your riches is in America, Zion, X marks the spot in America, and you will be in charge of all of the planet. You will bring peace. Let's figure out how it's going to happen. Luke 15, 15. And the Shemites, the Semitic people, the house of Israel, the house of Lewis, the dark-skinned, melanated people went and joined themselves to a citizen that Thoth is not their ruler. And he, the Japhetite, who brought Shem under bondage and affliction, sent Shem into the plantations to reap all the benefits for Dagon, which is Lucifer and his fallen angels, the Philistines. So the Shemites were put to work on the field to make the fallen angels, they call themselves the elite, rich, to feed them with riches. But that was their riches that's coming to an end because the richness has to change over to the rightful rich people, not physical richness, spiritual first, which brings you everything else that you need. Seek ye the kingdom of the most die first and everything else will be added to you. Which brings me to Luke 15 verse 21. Because the Shemite, they won't stay beaten down forever. The dark-skinned people won't stay beaten down forever. And it's one thing I can tell you. They can pray. They can pray and bring down the Holy Ghost. It's just that their direction the things that were given to them to include in their prayer misdirected their energy, but that is coming back. 
the right direction of the energy is coming back. So when dark-skinned people pray, they can pray, they can pray down the entire place. They can bring water down from heaven with their prayer. And this is what they did in Luke 15, 21. And the son, the Shemites, the dark-skinned people said unto their father, the Most High Allah, Father, I have sinned against heaven where my bank and my riches and my blessings are. And I've done that in your sight. And I'm ashamed of what I did. And I am no more worthy to be called your son. Because I've done all these things. And I've found myself at the bottom with people standing over me, suppressing me, everything I do. In my five divine laws, I can't do it because they just beat me down. They tell me what to worship, which is my connection to you. They have laws made against me, my political power. They have taken that away from me with these laws. They have rooted me out as a nation and put me in projects. And in poor countries, I have the poorest of the poor. They took my economics, my feet. They bound my feet. I have no economics. And they took my food and they genetically modified and gave me all kind of swines to eat. Oh, Father, I'm wrapped up in weeds. Free me from my oppressors. Free me, oh, Father. That's what the prodigal son, the Shemites, prayed to their father and the Lord both for deliverance because I am created in your image, O oh Father. You created me as a spiritual man, the spiritual woman. You made me an exact copy of you. You gave me immortality, eternal life. And that was taken away because of my own Wickedness, my own moving away from your laws, your commandments, your statutes, your covenant. But I'm now ready to move back to it. Give me back my eternal life. Put me back in the image of you, oh my father. Make me have the power, the willpower, the creative power. Make me filled with love, love for my fellow man and woman, and let me do unto all that which I want them to do unto me. Give me back my sound mind to make sound a decision. Let me not be afflicted anymore. Make me back into your image you created me Genesis 1, verse 27, give me that back. Not the Genesis 2, the physical. I want the Genesis 1, the spiritual. That's your prayer to your father. This is what you're asking your father to give you back. Genesis 1, verse 28 and 29. Your five divine laws, your cross. You are the cross. You stand, put your feet together, extend your arm. You are a cross. It's talking about you. The Egyptian Ankh is you. Genesis 1, verse 28 and 29. You are the cross. Any man which does not pick up his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. That's what Elijah says to the people. They give it to you as Jesus, just the same. But it's the same thing. You are the cross. To the wise, the cross is the tree of life. To the foolish, the cross is nonsense. Because they don't know understand. They have no understanding. Your cross, anyone who controls any component of your cross, controls you, O oh, house of Israel, house of Lewis, oh Judah, time for you to pick up the cross and show Israel how it's done. Because your father says you are going to do it. And your father 
declares the end at the beginning, so your father knows. Your father is incapable of telling lies, so your father has to tell you the truth. You have to get back your five divine law, and you will get back your five divine laws. This is your father telling you your reward after you've prayed to him, the prodigal son, Shem, the dark-skinned, melanated people, the copper-colored-skinned people. Luke 15, 20, and you arose, a great light struck you, Israel. A great light came to you. You arose and you went to your father. And when you were a little way off, your father saw you. You think your father is not watching you? You think your father has forgotten you? Are you out of your mind? Your father sees you all the time, but you have to serve the time to know and to find your way back to your father because you lost your way. Now you're finding your way because you know there's no other way but through the father and the Lord. And he saw you. He had compassion on you. And he had so much compassion. He did not walk to you. That means he came slowly to you. He ran to you. He's coming quickly at you now. And he's falling on your neck. He fell on your neck already. And he blessed you. What is the blessed? God blessed man. Genesis 1 verse 28. He blessed you so that your first divine law given back to you. He kissed you and blessed you. That's your first one given back to you. The blessing has started. Can't go far without your head. Your head is the blessing. Your head has to be right for the whole body now, the whole cross to function. The head is the window to the heavens. The head is the windows to the spirit. The head is the windows to the mansions of your father. What's in your head? Your crown and your pineal. Anything spiritually has to pass through those two. Now that he got your head back, let's read on Luke 15, 22. The father said to you, Shem, worry not. Worry not, Shem, because this is my plan for you to give you back all the things that was taken from you. The land and your five divine law, and your seven principles of the Lord told. The father said to his servants, who are the servants, other countries who are going to clean house in earth. Earth is America. That's where the story is being told. That's the location of the story. And the father said, bring forth, O servants, the best robe for Shem." The best robe, not just a robe, the best one. Who wears a robe? A king. Oh, Elijah, our king. Oh, Michael, our king. Oh, Emmanuel, our king. Give him the best robe and let him start ruling the way Judah should rule. Put it on him. Put the robe on him. Your political, your leadership given back to you. Not for some of the land or maybe part of the land. All the land of America and the rest of the world. Because the power starts in Zion. X marks the spot. Put the robe on him. Put a ring on his finger. When you get married, where do you put the ring? On your left hand finger. Social. When you're marrying your union, a man and a woman come together in this time. All the nation of the Shemites, all the nation of the dark skinned people come together. Put the ring on their finger, bring them together as a nation to rule over all nation. The cross isn't done yet. The cross isn't done yet. 
What about your feet? What about your feet? Put a shoes on his feet. What do you think it is? You go buy a Nike here? No, that's not a Nike it's talking about. Watch your feet. Watch your feet. Be fruitful, your economics. That's your feet. Esoteric writing at its best. Put a shoes on his feet. Put his economics back in his hand. Give him back his riches from heaven and on earth. Can't beat that. Whoever is ruling now have riches on earth. They're bankrupt in heaven. <laughs> you are rich in both places, in heaven and earth. Who's ordaining your richness? The most high Allah, Yah, Yod, He, Va'u, He, Elohim, and the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, ordaining your riches on earth and in heaven. Who ordained theirs? Lucifer and his fallen angels that have no riches in heaven. Their stock is worthless in heaven. So shoes on your feet. That's you, O Israel. Shoes on your feet, your economic wealth added back to you. Doesn't stop there. Doesn't stop there. And bring Shem, the dark-skinned people. Bring him. Bring him, the fatted calf. Not you're going to eat oxtail and beef stew. No, a calf. When you see calf in the Bible, it's talking about wealth. Calf, wealth. Kind, wealth. Cow, wealth. If it's a calf, that means it's a young calf, a young cow. New wealth, new money. Fatted means plenty of new money coming to you. Oh, house of Israel, house of Lewis, and kill it, kill his poverty. No more, end it. End his poverty and let him eat properly, eat good food that's going to raise his vibration. Go back to hear Genesis 1 verse 29, because the most I said it, your father said it. It didn't come secondhand. Your father gave it to you directly. God said, Behold, listen, look, I have given you every herb bearing seed. Every tree, those seeds have to be in those trees and those fruits. And to you it shall be for meat to make sure the man and the woman of Genesis 1 verse 27 is functioning with all cylinders firing 100%. You cannot be immortal and live eternity eating meat, starch, dairy, sugar. He gave you that diet right after he created you in spirit. Two verses down, you're created. You got your food. This is your food. That's why Israel the house of Israel is in so much turmoil now because of the food you moved away from it. Remember now, see yourself as a cross right in the chest area. That's where the diet and the appetite part of the cross is. That control all four. So if that one is messed up, if that food part is messed up, the entire cross crumbles. Nothing can get to the head, nothing can get to the right hand, nothing can get to the left hand, nothing can get to the feet. Why you think they're feeding you so much garbage? Why is it? Why is it? Why is it? $10 for a salad and $3 to $5 for a supersized Big Mac with large fries, large drink. Why, oh Israel? Because they know if they mess up the center of your cross, you shall crumble. But your father said, that is done. You're going to eat right and be happy, be merry. You did that when you were dead, spiritually dead to who you are. You didn't know who you are, but now that's done. 
Luke 15, 24, for my son, the dark-skinned, melanated people, for my daughters, the dark-skinned, melanated people, starting in America, North America, the Caribbean, Central America, South America, and the rest of the world. They were dead, and now they're alive again. They were lost to who they were, that they were connected directly to me. And they have been found. And they began, all of us began to be merry because our obstructors, our oppressors, our afflictors were moved out the way because the servants were called to clear the path and to put the best robe on you. They're gone out of your way, O house of Lewis. This is your father talking to you, which told me, give them their right reward. Stop joking around with their information and holding it hostage. Give them what they need to know. So Maguna on the info. Here it is. Your five divine laws. You are the cross, O Israel. You are the cross, and you're going to get that cross back. Every verse you see listed on this page is telling you about your cross. Want me to give you an example? They shall no more be the tail, they shall be the head. Hmm? Isn't that in your Bible? They shall no more be borrowers, they shall be the lenders. They shall get their right hand back and they shall get their left hand back because I am going to give you a mighty arm strong is thy right hand. All references in your Bible, once you know the code, whenever you see right hand, left hand, feet, they're telling you about your, you being the cross and the position and the code that goes with each of those. Right hand power, left hand social, feet economics, stomach, the food that you eat so you can be the spiritual man and woman. Your head, that's the connection to the spiritual realm. That's you, O Israel. Brings me back to your bread, your manna that's coming from heaven. This is it. Exodus 16, verse 4. Second Baruch, 29, verse 8. That's your manna. It's telling you it's going to happen, telling you the time. I won't read this. I will save it for the other message. I want to make sure the time isn't too long for this message. This is your manna that's coming down to make all of what I just read happen. And you know this is saying, it will happen. Second Baruch 29 verse 8. It will happen. Not maybe or could be. It will happen. The treasure of manna will come down. And they, the house of Israel, the dark-skinned, melanated people across the entire planet will eat. Oh, they will eat. And the eating starts the year 2022 for the next thousand years. But 25, that's when your oppressors, your afflictors, the one who's giving you great tribulations shall be out of your way. Your tribulation shall end at that time. O oh, house of Israel, stand strong, be strong, stay strong in the name of your father who hasn't forgotten about you ever. The most die, Allah, Yah, yod he fa he Elohim, God, as what we call him now, and the son who he has sent back to give us this information, who has sent us Elijah, those Melchizedek, Lehovah, praise, all praises be to you, O Father, you, O Lord. Mm -hmm.